Hello everybody, this is HD Shapes here. I'm back with another video. Hope this finds you well and in good spirits. So, the month of November is here, and so is this uh, small little mustache. Uh, it takes a few weeks for it to really um, start to look like much of anything, but um, this has sort of become my yearly tradition. Grow it out for the month of November, and then usually I get pretty sick of it by the end of the month. Um, so, Tobacktober Fest is over. No more tobacco and open blades, at least all the time, uh, I realized that I need more variety for the channel, more so than I need variety in my, you know, uh, off-camera shaves. I don't mind using the same thing for a month, but um, I know that the YouTube world would like to see some variety, so I'm going to try to be conscious of that uh, going forward, that even if I use the same thing all week on my own, that I should try to do something different for these videos. So, we are using Sterling Soap. Island Man today. This is a dupe of green, uh, Creed Virgin Island Water. I almost said green Irish, Irish tweed. The soap is a little blue color right there. You can see I've used not much of it. Um, and I'll also be using the matching Island Man Balm. For the razor today, it is something that I'm not sure that I've posted a video of since receiving it. So for the head, we have a WR2 0.95 solid bar gap, and the handle is a WRH390 uh, millimeter. The uh, handle is a more of kind of a brushed uh, finish, and the top is sort of the basic Wolfman polish. Would like to give a shout out to Frank, uh, a serious supporter of this channel, who traded me uh, this head, and then I actually just ordered this handle recently from Wolfman directly. Um, the 0.75 uh, turned out to actually be too mild for me, and I really enjoyed the 0.95 so far. Um, for the blade today, there was a post on, um, well, there's been a guy on the What Shaving subreddit who has for the past, I don't know, year or two, done these blade battles where he compares two blades to each other, whichever one is better, advances to the next round kind of thing. And to my surprise, the blade at the top of his list was the Gillette Menorah. Now they've since rebranded these um, and now they have like a lion on them. But as far as I know, these are still the same blade. And so in honor of that person who determined that uh, the Gillette Menorah was the best DE blade for him, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use this in the Wolfman today. I haven't used these Menorah blades in a while and I'm just struggling to get the there it goes. Uh, so that's what the blade looks like. I think the ones with the lion also look like that. Um, I haven't used this blade in a while. Um, these blades are made at the uh, Russian Gillette factory and um, they used to be at least sold and probably made you know, a really long time ago. Um, the WR2 has those four posts on the side, sort of reminiscent of a late uh, tech razor. Anyway, these menorah blades uh, used to be the the primary D blade, and they still are um, in the the country of South Africa. Um, so, for a while there, you couldn't buy these menorah blades easily um, if you were outside of South Africa, even though they were made in Russia. Um, you know, I'm talking like three years ago. E um, e even though they were being made in Russia, for some reason they were only being sold to that S South African market. So anyway, now you can find them very easily, and I think the one with the lion looks very cool. Okay, for the brush today, the return of the Samog Torga C5. Uh, this brush continues to break in nicely, and uh, still recommend it to people. So if I remember, I'll put a link to where you can buy it on the Maggard Razor site. Uh, there are only a couple of uh, vendors here in the U.S. that um, sell this brush. Uh, if you want to, you know, order it just from within the U.S. and not deal with international shipping. So let's go ahead and start loading the soap. I haven't used the soap in some time, so it's possible. Well, that's just as I say that, it looks like we have plenty of water here. Um, you know, Sterling is something, they're, they're a company that I really respect and um, so again, so they're, they're a brand that I often will recommend to people. Um, they, they do so many things so well, you know, the value standpoint, the 
strong, enjoyable scents. Um, they have so, so many of those. And uh, Sterling is definitely a brand that I always wish that I used more on this channel. I think the reason why I don't use it as much is because somehow I missed it uh, in the very beginning. Um, I have shared this story on here before, but in the very beginning, when I was shaving this way in 2019, I was using Art of Shaving, Parasso stuff in the very beginning, and then somehow I skipped brands like Sterling Chiseled Face and went straight to brands like Declaration Grooming. So I think because I didn't have that beginner you know, um, phase with Sterling like so many people do. Um, because of that, that's why I don't gravitate toward it much now. Um, and that's not because I think it's a bad product or anything like that. Um, so we've got the brush loaded up. Let's put some warm water. Working with two days growth here. And uh, I thank everybody for stopping by. So let's start with the face lather. This is just the regular towel base, not the mutton. Um, but the mutton is just as loved, if not more so, than this one. There's some rumors floating around that that mutton base is going to be discontinued in the nearest future. So if there's something that you really wanted to try in that base, um, might be worth getting it sooner rather than later. I went through my sterling mutton soap phase, uh, that was a year or two ago, and so I kind of already know that um, like Varin is my favorite one. Um, I could recommend that if you want kind of a Stanky Fougere. I really like Varin. And Porta Prince I wanted to like, but the lemongrass in there ended up being too much. Um, I was just hoping for more of a straight up Haitian vetiver like um, the Euphros um, Haitian vetiver, which. Um, that one is also kind of tricky to find these days, but I think you can still find the soap maybe at uh, Pasteur's. Don't see the balm very much. So this brush is definitely still kind of scrubby, um, but it has gotten softer. And it was exactly what I wanted, you know, um, I had tried a couple of Moogs in the past, and they just both were not dense and floppy. I didn't really enjoy either. And so I asked around and said, what would be dense and kind of on the stiff side? And this is what people recommended. And it was a good recommendation based on the criteria uh, that I had mentioned, right? I'm going to keep building my lather and bring back him. I'm about to start my first pass with the Wolfman WR2. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back and let's do our first pass with the grain mostly with the WR2.95 with a fresh uh, Gillette Menorah blade. Feeling pretty good. So a while back I did a blind test of the 0.85 and the 0.95 and then later got the 0.75. And let me say first that um, this is sort of the danger <laughs> when you go for one of these uh, razors that has a bunch of different base plates, is you can be tempted just to try as many as you can. Um, and in some ways it would be easier if it were just one option. 
Um, however, this 0.95 gap is considered standard, and I believe is you know James of Wolfman that's his preferred um, gap. And so, um, long story short, the 0.95 actually feels easier to shave with to me compared to those milder options. Um, I think it's just because the blade uh, sort of tells me where to go. Um, I think this is one of those cases where actually the mild razors are more difficult to use because it just requires very excellent technique um, to achieve a good shave. And I mean, I could shave with those razors. But it never felt, never felt very easy, you know, whereas this razor does feel easy. So I think it's a winner for me. Um, Going to rinse and come back for pass number two in just a moment. Pass number two. Pass number two with the 0.95. If you hear any strange sounds, or you're wondering why the lighting looks weirder than usual, uh, we've got a bit of a storm outside. Some pretty high winds that started um, yesterday. Uh, after a little rain and um, seems like the weather is finally starting to uh, change here. We were lucky uh, to have some really unexpectedly warm days. I think even yesterday it almost got up to 70, which is pretty unheard of here. I usually am pessimistic and assume that there's going to be significant snow by Halloween. And then it's just going to be cold <laughs> for months and months after that. Um, but yeah, it was a fairly warm. It was actually kind of foggy on Halloween. So I hope all the trick or treaters like that. But looking at the forecast. Next week, it looks like we're going to finally get into some cool temperatures. Right, second pass done. Rinse and come back for the third and final pass. Hang in there. Third pass with Sterling Island Man. Okay, let's go against the grain mostly now with the WR2. And just took, took a general look at my calendar um, over the next two months, you know, before the end of the year. And doing quite a bit of traveling. I didn't really put it together.
but yeah, it's like several weeks worth, um, which is sort of a unheard of for a person that's uh, mostly self-employed. Um, the issue being if you travel a bunch or have to take off, then you don't get paid. Um, so, of course, it requires a little bit of uh, smart money planning for the year, knowing when you're going to take off and saving accordingly. But it just also feels odd just to think that I won't have work for weeks, you know. I'm definitely a person that likes to work, you know. My, my profession is not particularly demanding, so I don't mind working. And, you know, it's not just about the money, too. It's, it's about having the structure and getting out there contributing to society. <laughs> so, anyway, traveling coming up, that's kind of weird. Next week, I realize I'll be leaving uh, Friday morning to go to Detroit to hear a concert on Saturday. So hopefully I can get a video out maybe Thursday. Um, we'll see how that turns out. Okay, just feeling around for spots I missed. And not too much, less than usual. All right, great. We're going to call that good. Stay tuned and stick around. I'll be back to apply some Island Man Balm. Okay, we're back and let's apply some of Australian Island Man Balm. So what does it contain? Witch Hazel, Aloe, Metal, Theme, Metal Foam Seed Oil, Glycerin, Grape Seed Oil. Um, in this case, the balm definitely works much better for me than the splash. Um, I generally just avoid sterling splashes altogether. Um, just find them to be a little bit too harsh. Um, I think they have a lot of uh, alcohol in their formula, and some people really like that, and that's nice. But for me, too much. And uh, that's all you need for the bomb. You don't need very much of it, so that's a good thing. All right, let's do a final recap. Uh, we used Sterling Man Island Sterling Man. Man, I gotta go eat something. Sterling Island Man soap and balm. There it is. Okay, we used Samog Torga C5 Borb Knot. Uh, recommend this brush if you want something dense and a little stiff. And then finally the Gillette, <laughs> there's, a, there's a Gillette Menor blade in here, but it's a Wolfman WR2 uh, 0.95 solid bar with the WRH3 handle. Okay, um, somehow my condition is deteriorating as this video goes on, but if you made it this far in the video, as always, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Feel free to leave comments or questions below. This has been HG Shaves. Take care. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye.